farmers think about raising healthy chickens. Turkey hens are especially good breeders. They can be forced into lay as early as February. The hen should sit on warm potatoes in order to accustom herself to sitting. A few days later, she can be put on real eggs. Chicks reared by a turkey hen are well looked after and are seldom much trouble. Day old chicks are usually handled in the wrong way. In this small box in a dark corner by the stove, they cannot possibly thrive. No wonder they get rickets after a few days. Better care must be taken in raising chickens. Chickens are delicate and mistakes in raising always have grave consequences. If you give water like this, the chickens get wet and catch cold. Bread is no good as chicken food. Big crumbs like this should never be fed. They cause diarrhea and, as you can see, the chicks do not even like them. This is much better. Chickens must have light. A chicken will stay like this at the window for a few weeks. A simple box serves the purpose very well. This way, the chicks don't get wet. The hole in the flower pot should be stopped up, of course. For the first few days, feeding ground wheat, maize or barley is best for them. And even warm temperature is very important to their growth. As can be seen, this can be achieved very simply. The hot water bottle must be filled regularly. Chicks well looked after pay big dividends later on. This model was made by a skilled worker. For hens only, less room will be required. Here also the hot water bottle is used. Quite a small run is sufficient. The chicks will soon be hardened. Whilst the chicks are kept inside, it is advisable to put some grass in every day. They will enjoy something to scratch at and toe picking which can cause epidemics will thus be avoided. This little chicken house enables you to carry your chickens out into the open and put them on a fresh piece of grass. As soon as the weather permits, they should be exposed to the sun. Whether inside or out, there should always be fresh water around. In order to avoid any infection of the intestines, it is advisable to give them peppermint or chamomile tea. It has also proved useful to mix some chinsol or something similar with their water once a week. The directions for use should of course be carefully followed. The electric brooder is a great help. Here, heat is produced from two sides. Newspaper can be used to keep the lower plate clean. 30 to 40 chickens can be raised with this electric brooder. Charcoal must always be available. Because of its chemical quality, it helps digestion. The chickens themselves notice the benefit and constantly eat it. If you have a large number of chickens, it pays to get an automatic waterer. Be careful when filling. No water must be spilled. That is why the tin plate bottom, which is covered with sawdust, has to be quite straight. Leaking has to be avoided. During the first few days, a small board for their grits will do. But chickens grow quickly and bigger vessels will soon be needed. Sour milk, to be put in clay or enamel vessels only, contains lots of albumin and is very good for chicks. And don't forget their grit. Experience has shown that it is advisable to show the fountain to some of the chickens when putting them in. For the first day of their life, the chicks are still provided with food so that they do not feel hungry during transport, but they do get thirsty. When buying chicks, see that the hatchery you buy from is well known. If the breed is not good, all your work will be in vain.
This electric brooder has curtains which help to keep in the warmth. Here is an artificial clucking hen. This one is particularly suitable for cold rooms. It has adjustable heating and is quite cheap. These clucking hens are made in different shapes and sizes. They look so healthy. Yes, they are the farmer's delight. If they grow like this, his work is worthwhile. Chopped raw beet is the best food for chickens. At first, they do not seem to like it, but once having really tried it, it soon becomes their favorite food. They will eat lots of this, and this reduces the cost of feeding. Here is an all-weather chicken house heated by coal and housing some 80 to 100 chicks. At not later than eight weeks after hatching, the hens have to be separated from the cocks. They are put in a bigger transportable house which can be put out in the field. Now this chicken house is homemade. It is important to build a chicken house in good time and to put the young birds in early enough to get them used to it. It is more practical if the bars can be taken out to facilitate cleaning. The feeding will be cheaper from now on, of course, since the birds will find most of their own food. Of course, they will always need fresh water. In order not to have to carry water out too often, a large fountain should be used. Very often, chickens are raised in houses with stone walls. In order to disinfect the interior, the walls must be lime washed. The floor is kept warm by a layer of horse manure. Similar to a forcing bed, the dung should be 30 to 40 centimeters thick. This new method has been proved during the last few years. It is healthy and saves a lot of heating. The dung is covered with sand, which should be five to 10 centimeters deep. This sand not only facilitates cleaning, but it's also very good for the birds. Chickens have to scratch and like to pick up grit, which is good for their digestion. Chaff and chopped straw is best for litter. Chickens like chaff. They even find some food in it. This is chopped lucerne straw. Dry clover or grass are also good food. If the weather is especially cold, the electric heating must be used too. The clucker is heated with, st with coke. This clucker is heated with coke. Several red hot coals are covered with a thin layer of dry coke. This makes the lighting of the fire easy. Ventilation is of the utmost importance. A screen on either side increases the warmth and affords protection against draft. It is true that careful raising of chickens entails a lot of work and requires special care. Much time, knowledge and experience are needed. This idea saves time and money. A farmer's daughter, who was very interested in poultry and who had been given special lessons in raising poultry, took all the chickens in the neighborhood to look after. The villagers knew that their chickens were well cared for and that they would have healthy hens which would begin laying eggs in the autumn. This also reduced the cost of raising. The farmers supplied the food and if anyone needs help, it is always at hand.
for the raising of so many chickens, several big runs are essential. The walls have been carefully lime washed and the right grass mixture has been sown in good time. The temperature of the brooder is controlled. Caring for four or five hundred chickens is a big job. It is a good thing to separate houses from the runs. It makes the work much easier. Chopped stinging nettles contain a lot of iron and are therefore good food. And this is grit. Each stage of growth needs a different food. This chicken house provides holders for food and water. The sour milk is kept in enamel vessels, here on the left. On the right, the fountain is placed on soil containing peat. On the left, in the background, is the hidden automatic feeder. It avoids any scattering of the food. On the far left is the charcoal. In the middle is a nice piece of grass, and right in front, some raw food. Red beets, carrots, and stinging nettles. Mixed food is the secret of right feeding. Badly balanced food is very bad for young birds. Remember those young chickens in a dark box beside the stove. Sun, air, light and warmth as well, as good care are necessary to raise healthy chickens. 